In this video, I will show you how to get started with the incremental load of your data warehouse. In order to do that, I will need some metadata about how uh, or when we have uploaded uh, our data warehouse and which tables we have uploaded. So first I'm going to create a new schema for my data warehouse in which I'm going to create all these metadata tables and fields that I might need. If I go ahead and execute the first part of the codes, I have now generated a schema in my data warehouse. Then I create a log update table that's going to hold the name of the field and when that was last uh, updated. And you can see the last load date is an integer. That's because this is the one I'm going to be joining on and integers are very performant when joining. So that's a, that's a pro of using that for, it, for the date field. That also relies heavily on the assumption that I'm only going to be uh, incrementally updating this data warehouse, uh, for example, during a nightly load and not uh, having intraday updates. If I needed intraday updates, I would need to store information about both the date and the time that it was loaded so that I can see what records have been changed since the last load during that day. But uh, here I'm working with the assumption that all source systems are not being updated during the nighttime and that I can just do nightly updates. So if I go ahead and execute that, I have now generated the uh, metadata table log update in my data warehouse. Now I need to insert into that log update field information about when the, the dimension tables and the fact tables have last been updated. I'm going to use as a proxy for the last update the time in which the last changes have been happening in the source system rather than the date that I actually did my incremental load. But you'd usually put the time in which you actually do your incremental load also in these logging fields and not having to rely on whether or not uh, data has been updated in the source system in the meantime. Now for the next part, I will insert into these uh, metadata tables that I've just created information about the last time that the dimension tables have been updated. Rather than using the date in which I actually did my uh, initial load of my data warehouse, I'm going to use as a proxy for the last update, the last date in which uh, records have been generated in my source system, so my Northwind source database. And doing this, I'm going to insert into the ETL log update table values and then the dimension table name and 9098, 05, 06, and the same for dim product, dim shipper, dim employee, and also for the fax sale table. And if I do that, I now have generated the rows. We can verify that we actually have this data by refreshing our test data warehouse, which I'm working on here, and expanding tables and going in and finding the ETL log update, select sub thousand rows. And you see here, uh, it actually generated a record for each dimension table and for the fact table that I have in my data warehouse with a last load date integer field. Now, the next thing I need to do is go back and prepare my dimension tables to actually be able to hand these incremental changes. So for example, slowly changing dimension types. And in order to prepare for that, I need to go and alter all the dimension tables and add two new fields or columns, one called valid from and one called valid to. And by knowing these informations, I can then connect relevant fact cell records to the corresponding dimension row that says which attributes is the valid ones for this given record. And I do that by going in and using this alter table and then adding the fields valid from and valid to, which are both going to be integer fields because they're going to hold this uh, surrogate date key, right? So if I execute that, and then I verify by, for example, looking at my EDW customer, select top thousand rows. I can now see valid from and valid to has been added. And there is a valid from and valid to column here, but they contain null values because I haven't updated them yet. So I have to do that. I go back to this script and now I update all of my records and I need to, to delete this because that's, uh, otherwise it's pointing to the wrong the wrong database on my left hand side, right? And I'm using this test test WH 
DWH for, um, for making these videos. So I update the current records with valid from, and for this purpose, let's use the first record in the fact sales table, because that's when the source system most likely has been implemented since it started capturing data. And then for the valid to date, I'm going to use a future date. And I would come up with this mock future date of the year 9999 or 101. And that's just a, a, a mock-up date, it, as long as it's one in the future, right? You can also change it every day to be the next day. But uh, to me, that just seems uh, wasteful. Let's just put it very much in the future. And then when they become not valid, we update them and something else becomes valid. So I update all of my dimension tables with this valid from and valid to date. If I hit execute, I'm now getting uh, yeah an error on the dim product. That's because I have a typo here. I call it dim product in singular form and not dim products in form. So if I execute these 77 and three rows, yes. And we can now verify by looking at this dim customer table that we should now have valid from the first possible date and valid to the very future date on all of our records. So that looks nice. In this next part of the video, I'm going to show you how to actually deal with the incremental changes in the data warehouse. We're going to be looking at adding, changing, and deleting. In order to follow along with this video, you will have to make some changes in your source database. So that is the source Northwind database. So to follow along with this video from now on, you have to follow a three step process. First, make the, the change. So if uh, we're going to do addition, then you add. If we're going to look at the changing records, then you change a record and so on. Then the next part is uh, run the initial uh, update. So update your stage table. This is exactly the same uh, stage load as I shown you in the initial population of your data warehouse in previous videos this semester. Then follow along in the videos. That's going to be the third step. I'm going to show you how you can actually change tables in your source system. So let me show you how to add a new customer to the DBO customers table in the Northwind database. So if you go to Northwind DB, find DBO customer, and then select edit top 200 rows, then you open up everything in an editable format here. So now you can change if you want, but I was going to show you addition. So I will scroll way down and I have an entire null record here. And if I put some data in here and enter, then I submit that data to the source database. And I'm going to create a new customer here and I'm going to use that uh, customer ID for among and then call the company among us. And let's do a contact name for that. It could be my name. Let's just put my name. And then the contact title, imposter. I want to be an imposter. Then address online everywhere. Where in, let's do the world, whatever. And then region, let's leave that for null, post, postal code. Actually, let's change it. Um, country, Denmark, phone, yeah, I'm not giving you my phone number, zero, 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 and fax, I also don't have a fax, so let's leave that for now. If I now hit enter, I have submitted that record. If I close this edi edible, editable table, not edible, <laughs> clearly not, and I hit execute for customers, I now see among us generated with a row here. So there is an addition based what we currently have in our data warehouse, and we can work with that. First, of course, run the script from your initial load that populates uh, your stage table before looking at additions. Now you see here in the stage dim customer table, I have the among us row table that I created here, but in this uh, EDW table, I don't have an among us record because I haven't inserted it yet. And I want to insert it with the correct valid to and valid from date for, for added records here so that it doesn't all of a sudden become 
uh, valid for older uh, records, but only for the records generated within this valid from valid to window. Uh, and in order to do that, I use this script that I prepared here. I declare, I, I use variables in SQL. So I declare a last load date int, set the last load date, and then I go into my uh, metadata table log update, and I find the max, so the highest value for last load date where the table is dim customer. And I'm only going to show how to do this for the customer table, but of course you have to repeat it for all your other dimension tables as well. Then I declare a new uh, load date and I set that new load date to, and then I use this get date function and the convert and char to actually uh, change it into this format of uh, 990101 like this. Then I declare a future date int and I set the future date and this is my uh, pseudo future record key that I just came up with. And you can use tomorrow, like I said earlier, you can use tomorrow, but, but I'm using this. So after declaring these variables, I can now actually uh, start writing the script that's going to insert these records. Records. And I insert in two EDW customer, all the fields, and I select the fields. And for valid from and valid to, I use these variables that I just declared previously. And from, and I'm of course going to use my stage table as my source for the EDW table. Now here's the kicker, right? So I have to uh, choose only the records that have been added. And to find the edits, I say select customer ID from stage dim customer, except select the ones that are already in EDW uh, customer where valid2 is a uh, future date. And if I just run this part of the script just to show you, execute, I only get this customer uh, ID among that you saw me create. So if I do this, insert into and do all this, I only get that one record, right? But I want to use uh, the variables, I have to include that in, in the script that I'm going to run. And if I hit execute on this, it should say successfully inserted one record. Yes. Before we move on to this next part of the incremental updating of our data warehouse, I just want to make sure that you uh, both inserted a new record and changed an existing record in your source system. And in my case, I changed the custom ID WHITC from having the company name uh, White Clover Markets to Blue Clover Markets. And I also added another customer that I gave the ID delete and the company name delete me. And I'm going to use that for, for deleting in, in the next part of this step. So uh, yeah, I just want to make sure that you have this and that it's, uh, uh, that it's loaded to your stage data warehouse. So, so make sure you have that. So in this first part of the script, we are going to find only the changed records and putting them into a temporary table that I've called temp table. You can do the same with common table expressions. So rather than putting them into temp, you can put them into a common table expression and then refer to them later. A common table expression works with SQL Server 2005 and forwards, but temp table works with all versions. So that's why I'm showing this here. And first, what we do is that we get all the records from the stage table. You can see if we run this, now we get all the records, but we want to not bring in the records that already exist in the EDW and have a valid to date that's in the future. So if I run this part, I now get information about the two records that I've just shown you, the delete, that is a new record that I inserted into my source system and the blue clover markets, which I've changed from white clover markets. Then because I'm only interested in the change, changed records now, because the added records, the delete have been, or would have been handled with the script that I've shown you just previously in this video, then I need to find a way so that I can select only the blue clover markets uh, record right here. So I then put an additional accept select statement in which that select statement is selecting from the customer table and then having this where clause to actually find a, if we run this where clause you can see so actually finding the new record using this uh, 
this select statement in here. So if I run the entire thing here, what I get is only the record where I changed the name. So the changed records here. And if I remove these comments from the into temp, then I will insert this record into a temp table by running this script. So then, and I'm just going to talk about it and then come back to it. So then using this temp table as the source and this insert into, I can insert into my EDV table using only the records that I temporarily put in the temp table. Then I can update my EDW customer and set the valid to new load date minus one where customer ID in and then finding the all the changed records from this temp table and EDW dim customer valid from is newer than the new load uh, new load date and then drop the temp table if it exists because I need to drop it because if I don't drop it it's going to give me an error next time I run the script uh, due to the fact that this temp table already exists if it's within the confinement of the same connection so I still need to use these uh, set set variables with load date and everything so I now run everything and that should give me uh, the changed records For this next part, I have gone ahead and in my Northwind DB, I've deleted this record delete me, delete, that currently exists in my EDW customers table. Now for the incremental script in order to handle these deleted records, what I'm going to do is to look for the customer IDs in the EDW dim customer table where the customer ID doesn't exist. And then I'm putting this select statement in here where I select the customer IDs from EDW dim customer and then accept select customer ID from stage. So all these except the ones that exist here, right? So if I, if I generate this, sorry, um, if I, execute this, I then get delete, right? Because since I just updated the stage table that reflects whatever I have in my source system, then delete that I deleted in my source system is not going to be in the stage table when I populate them. So I now have the difference between my EDW customers table and my stage customer table. And the difference is of course the deleted ones. And then I use this script to say, uh, update EDW dim customer set the valid to date on the delete to be the day that I'm loading now minus one. So it was, it was valid up until yesterday and then and delete it. And by the end of the whole thing, I also want to lock a new metadata to my lock update table to let, the, let the table know when, when I've up my entire dim customers table because these three things that I've just shown you to get the added changed and deleted you want to do them in one flow right so that's the entire incremental update for dim customer and then you lock at the end of it and in the same way you don't declare these variables for each part of the script I've just done that to to step through the code for you in this video so if I run this whole thing I now get one row affected and it's for uh, for inserting it right and for changing one so that's why it's it's the message comes up twice here